I think I lost. Oh, you've got the full screen. That's great. Okay, I just have to ask your, for your patience a little bit this morning. I had a few technical issues, so I don't have as many photographs as I had hoped I would, but we still, uh, we still have a few that should give you a general idea. Um, uh, so just to give you a brief introduction, uh, the Nova Scotia Museum, as you're probably familiar, is a decentralized provincial government museum system, and it's part of the Nova Scotia Department of Communities, Culture, and Heritage. And it was established in 1868, and there were two citizen groups uh, that were sort of uh, the basis of that, and that was the uh, Mechanics Institute and the Institute of Science. And so collections were started uh, back in the 1800s, which formed the basis of the collection that we have today. And there are about 28 museum sites across Nova Scotia, uh, including the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic, the Black Loyalist Heritage Center, the Ross Farm Museum, uh, Museum of Industry, Fundy Geo, Highland Village, etc., And the museum is responsible for approximately a million artifacts uh, and growing <laughs> within the following seven collections, cultural history, maritime history, ethnology, archeology, span zoology, botany, and geology. And that's as well as all the heritage buildings, houses, and vessels that we're responsible for. And we have approximately 437,000 uh, visitors per year. And uh, so the, the reorg that we're working on, we're focusing on one uh, particular area of our collection, which is within the cultural history, and it's the textile and costume collection. And there's about 3,449 3, objects in our central storage area. Uh, there are other sites, like the, the Maritime Museum, uh, and other sites uh, that have their own textile storage, but there's also a primary central storage area uh, that we maintain a lovely uh, collection of costumes and textiles. Uh, things like clothing, uniforms, shoes, carpets, uh, parasols, uh, quilts and coverlets, aprons, samplers, lace, knitted items, weavings, you name it, we have it. And uh, some of the highlights from our collection are uh, the earliest surviving example of a Cadian costume in Canada, and that's from 1847. We have a weaving made by a freed slave from the ship Amistad. We have the earliest example of hand-spun, hand-woven child's garment in Canada. That's from 1850. And we have many of, uh, uh, we have two of Nova Scotia's earliest dated quilts from 1810. Fantastic Mi'kmaq collection. Uh, wonderful uh, beaded garments, ribbon skirts. Uh, phenomenal collection there. Um, and also uh, dresses from the 1780s. And we have uh, one of, I think it's uh, North America's only six British colonial red coats from 1784. And of course, uh, Joseph Howe's dressing gown and carpet bag. <laughs> and we also have a very exotic um, Qing Dynasty Chinese court Mandarin uniform. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you the photos of some of those wonderful pieces. So I apologize for that. Uh, display areas. So technically, um, we don't have a dedicated exhibit uh, gallery or space for uh, textiles and co costumes and for culture history, but as you know, culture history is represented in many of our sites across the province. Uh, so we have that central collection, as I mentioned. Uh, it's based in Summer Street in the third floor of the Museum of Natural History. And most of uh, the artifacts from the textile collection are exhibited through loans to other museums. Um, but there are areas within the Museum of Natural History when they become available uh, that can be used for displaying portions of that collection. And uh, this is a building floor plan. Uh, so again, it's a little hard to see, but our costume uh, storage area is in the center. Uh, it's right about... And uh, so that's about 303 square feet of space that we have. Uh, then textiles are stored in another separate storage uh, area. So our goal is really to get everything under one roof. So this is a fabulous collection. Uh, interest in it uh, is, uh, exists, has grown by about 60% in the last year for study, access, and going out on exhibit. And we have a number of issues which I'll mention. Um, 
And again, this is in the third floor, so that's uh, to remind you, it's just taking up one small footprint in um, uh, an area that is uh, storing other collections of so botany, geology, zoology, natural history, ethnology, and archaeology. So we're sharing the space with those areas. And here are some photos. So this is an idea of our textile costume storage area. So lots of issues. <laughs> um, we have overcrowding, which is one of our largest. Uh, we have bed coverings stored in degrading plastic uh, that needs to be removed. Uh, there are acidic containers on the bottom. Uh, a lot of delicate textiles are in that. The containers themselves are quite over capacity. Um, and we really need to reconfigure this to make it work better. And of course, in the center, you see a rolling uh, trolley cart <laughs> that is being used for permanent storage of uniforms. And this is an idea of our storage self-evaluation uh, exercise that we went through. So even though um, you know we did not too bad with the small, it's identified as small improvements are needed. Um, some of those, some of those are, you know, uh, still reflect a lot of issues such as the overcrowding. Uh, a lot of the costumes are being brushed up against, so you're handling more than one object in order to get to one, the one that you wish to retrieve. Uh, a lot of things are in degrading containers. Uh, we don't have a uh, visitor access uh, policy, so there's some procedures and, and uh, management policies again that we could work on. Definitely things that we need to address. Also, one of the, the major issues uh, is a weight-bearing capacity issue that we have for the floor in costume storage. Uh, and so here's some figures. Uh, we're looking at about 93% floor occupation in this little space, um, about 120% unit fullness. Um, so each unit is over capacity. Uh, we're using the maximum room height usage because in Nova Scotia we have an 18 inch uh, clearance that we have to give for sprinklers. And the, I think it came out to about 106% overall fullness in general in that costume storage room. And about 53% of the collection has been inventoried. Uh, so we have, we have to finish about half of it and 98% has been about accessioned. And 60% can be retrieved within three minutes, so we have some work to do there. Again, so the main issues, overcrowding. Uh, storage units are some close-ups there. Uh, we have a wonderful quilt collection, phenomenal, and that's been in temporary uh, storage containers for about 10 years, so it's time to get those out and back and under one roof. We have a lot of uh, interest in that particular collection and it's very difficult. <coughs> Many of them are inaccessible and uh, very difficult to access for study and storage. And we have a lot of researchers who are, uh, who are looking for that. And we have uh, an issue with an air vent in terms of main building issues is there's an air vent in the ceiling next to the door uh, of the textile storage room, which occasionally leaks condensation when humidity is high, so that obviously has to be addressed. And the weight-bearing issue that I mentioned of the costume storage is, in text is considered heavy, so we're not actually supposed to add any more textiles to that room. Uh, it shares a space with, um, it's considered a bay, uh, but the room imme immediately adjacent to it is a documents room. So as you know, paper is very heavy. So the weight, weight bearing of that floor uh, is at capacity and we really are not supposed to be adding anything more to that. So our challenge is to find another space uh, to alleviate that and yet to accommodate more textiles that are in another. An updated collection strategy uh, which needs to be completed, an inventory of textiles and tools and equipment needs completing, and access to storage. Uh, sometimes we have issues because it's maintained by another government department. You have a lot of s staff coming and going uh, uh, to uh, work on building issues, so you're constantly keeping an eye in, in, on who is coming and going and making sure that secure access is maintained. And so our priorities. Uh, are to complete that inventory and identify the objects for reshuffling. So we've identified that there are uh, several um, areas. There's an area of objects that are overrepresented 
um, uh, redundant and very robust, and they're never accessed. So this is an opportunity possibly for some deaccessioning in the future, but uh, we will be reshuffling those collections to free up some space adjacent to the costume area and bringing in those quilts and other uh, textiles that are stored in another area. And we'll be re reconfiguring the existing storage furniture to better accommodate those hanging costumes and to get rid of that rolling cart and so that I can put in new costumes and new textiles that are waiting to be accessioned. Um, because as you can see, there's very little room to accommodate growth in the collection until we get the space sorted. And we need to remove and rehouse textiles from deglading plastic covers and from the acidic cardboard boxes and purchase and construct the new storage units to accommodate rolled textiles, as many of the quilts will be. And that's a very quick snapshot of our situation. Thank you.